Okay. Well, welcome, 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 everybody. I'm so excited that you could join us this evening. And I want to thank my amazing co-host, Beth Polari, who just makes all this magic come together beautifully. And tonight we are so lucky to have one of my favorite people in the world, Mr. Jerry White. Um, but before we get started, let's just talk about what what's in this amazing blue bottle. What are redox signaling molecules? Because I know we've got some new people here. Redox signaling molecules, it says cell signaling supplement. Not really a supplement. A supplement is something that you take that your body doesn't naturally make that should, in theory, help you. This is a bio replenishment. This is something that is better than all natural. Naturals like blueberries and lemons. This is native to your cells. Your mitochondria are making this every few moments. You know, you could maybe go for three weeks without food and maybe three days without water, perhaps three minutes without oxygen. You cannot last three seconds without your redox signaling molecules that your mitochondria make. And as you get older, you're making less and less and less of it. And uh, so this just replenishes what should be in your body. It's what makes your cells work so well and heal so quickly. And it works in a few ways. It helps your cells communicate. So it amplifies and it clarifies the signals between and within your cells. So they're just talking to each other better. It sort of wakes up the inner doctor in your cells, makes them go like, oh, oh, there's something that we should deal with. So it helps your cells detect, repair, replace damaged cells, boosts your antioxidants in an amazing way. So glutathione, efficacy of that, superoxide dismutase goes way, way up. I tell people, I haven't bought Kleenex since 2016, which is when I started this. And it turns on genes for your cardiac system, your immune system, your inflammatory system, your digestive system, and your hormone modulation. We don't make any claims that this is a cure or treatment, but it definitely makes your cells work better, heal faster. Every health challenge involves cells. And tonight we're gonna talk about neurological issues, uh, particularly the one that, that makes you shake. And after a while, it could lead to problems with mobility. People kind of do this bit of a shuffle. Sometimes it becomes a problem to speak. They might stutter. It could get worse. It could be perseverating. So they just can't get the words out. Um, also, swallowing can be a problem when you have this, this issue. And I want to hand it over to one of the most amazing people on this planet. If I were to list his credentials, it would take the whole half hour. So let me just say, it's one of the smartest people I know. Whenever anybody presents a situation to me and I, I like call my doctor friends, I'm like, what in the world is this? And they're like, we have no idea. Go call Jerry. Jerry always has the answer. So, so smart, and he's very nice and very funny. So, Jerry, why don't you take the spotlight? Well, it's a delight to be here. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> what I was looking forward to was the theme song tonight. So when Laura asked me to be on, I thought I was going to be here by myself. So uh, without the theme song, you can't start the event. So for those of you who wonder where you are right now, I guess this is the latest with Laura. Here you go. Okay, so I want you to practice that over the course of the weekend. Uh, let's see how you do with it. Well, we have a short time to jump into this concept. My background is in in a lot of different things, but human motion has a lot to do with it. How the body functions. I'm a research physical therapist, but also coached at the international level in a number of different sports, predominantly things like swimming and triathlons and track and field and all that kind of stuff. So as you can imagine, they all involve coordinated movement. And what's very interesting to me is that there aren't very many people who work in the field of even neurology. So let's say that uh, we started out in this world affecting people's health with food. I mean, way back, even the ancients talked about your food is your medicine and you can get better and, and herbs and plants and, and uh, things that you can add to your system. 
And then uh, it became pretty evident that uh, if somebody got sliced open or they got a broken bone, you could do some things with the mechanics. So the first one was biochemistry, a little bit of that, and then mixed in with biomechanics. Uh, so you can splint that thing. You can put the shoulder back in place. You can work on the mechanical issues and the mechanical properties. And and then we got into a, a, a big deal with the biochemistry. Uh, and that's been a big run for about 150 years now. But the the next one up the line is the neurobiophysics. Uh, and included in the biophysics is the electrical conductivity of the nervous system. And surprisingly, like my mom has been uh, looking to be getting a diagnosis for some things that she's got going on later in life. And there's we live in a town that has 400,000 people in the general area. And there's only one neuro neurologist. Huh. For some reason, we just haven't cracked into that. And part of that is because it's difficult to measure. And a lot of it is suppositions. So in my laboratory, which was called the Human Performance and Gait Analysis Lab that we set up at the Shriners Hospital years ago, but it, it was taking a look at how human beings perform after the neurologic system is damaged or the orthopedic systems are damaged. And what what does the body do? What does that person do? In those days, it was mostly kids and to adapt to the world around them. So the concept of adaptation has always been sort of high on my schedule. As you look at this material called the sea of redox and, and uh, the redox signaling as a concept, we're breaking into the next one that's probably bigger than all of them. With biophysics and now into this redox signaling, this this communication that goes on between systems in the body. So what happens if you begin to start to lose the communication? Now, if we lose the communication uh, in, in the standard understanding of the nervous system, um, think back to when the first nervous system experiments were done. They would take a frog's leg and they'd take like a nine volt battery and stick it on the frog's leg and go boing, boing. Went, wait a second. You can affect movement by electrically exciting the nervous system or something in the, in the body. And so all of this study began on how the nervous system takes in information and just, uh, It'll take it through sensory components, things like heat and touch and um, pressure, pain, chemicals. All these things have receptors in the body. And we talk about sending signals up and down the, the system. But, but really, for all of you and all of us, what we want to do is to understand the basic functional stuff you have to do with all of that. And, and the appreciation for how remarkable it is. So let's say we have a person who is beginning to start to show some signs of some of the things that Laura was talking about. One of the, things, the key components to these disorders is if you don't believe you're in control, you can get all stiffed up. An example of that, we were at, in the... Uh, Southern California on the 13th floor of the Disneyland Hotel many, many years ago. It was the middle of the night and there was a giant earthquake. We were that 13th floor was just flying all over the place. So we attempted to get out of the room and get outside. And uh, normally I could get around a room pretty quickly if the lights were on. And if I wasn't the one that stuck that ottoman in the way, or there was a desk there when I, I couldn't remember whether the door was on this side or that side, and we all shuffle and we reach out, you bang a few things and you're going to start squatting down a little bit. You're going to start getting more rigid. You're going to have slower movements. So we, we looked at the neurologic system saying, 
what are some of the reasons why that that occurs uh, neurologically? What's shutting down and the muscles are not receiving the information and there's a deterioration of the, the signal quality. But just from a practical application, we all get stiff when we are scared. We get stiff when we're, we don't have the right inputs. So I did a really interesting study that you can all play with. Um, and if you take a person who has this kind of rigid, rigid steppage gait, they tend to lean forward, but not too much because they can't react. They're stiff. They're rigid. Um, they're shaking. That's all part of that rigidity and that, that control issue. And what if we could make some functional changes pretty darn quickly? So here was my experiment. I thought we're we're not able to process what's going on in the world around us fast enough if we have this condition. And <clears throat> we need more process. So we we look at balance. And all of you can play this while we're while we're here today if you want. Um, there are three ways in which we take in information to the nervous system to balance with. One of them is, what is your visual orientation to the horizon? So if you want to find out if you're using mostly your vision to balance, one thing you can do is close your eyes and see how you do. Maybe try to walk on a two by four or something without falling off with your eyes closed. And then turn your open your eyes back up and you find it to be very easy. But if you close it, you're missing one of the three inputs. Another input is called proprioception. It knows where your joints are in space. So if I ask you, do you feel your right or lift up your toes on your left foot? You don't actually have to be seeing them to know that they're either lifted up or they're not lifted up. If you're leaning forward, you can be looking in a totally different direction or have your eyes closed and you can get some balance input from that. Where are my joints in space? And the third one is your inner ear. And uh, in your inner ear, there's this stone in there that's a little heavier at the bottom. And as you lean forward, it tries to stay upright. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's it's like a pendulum in, in, in it, and it stays it stays up and down in terms of gravity but your head moved now that then picks up as a signal where you are in space so we do a lot of stuff those of you who are were a little wild maybe in college and compromised your nervous function and they had to step out of the car and uh, walk with one foot in front of the other and put your head up and touch your your nose you're you're affecting your nervous system and you're effectively deadening how well you take in information and so you would fall to the side you would lose your balance you might uh, step a little slower and what we found out with people who have these conditions there are a few things that you can test and you can add back some feedback we never really thought of before Take the person who is uh, suffering from one of these conditions. They just, they, 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 they kind of are out of balance. They might even be leaning up against things, holding on to a wall. They don't have to have a neurologic condition, but maybe just got lousy balance. Our job isn't to try to determine what's going to happen with that disease. It's to basically say, can we help them have a better life? So I found out that if I could get somebody to walk down halfway to the wall, and try to turn around while well, people with this condition, they wouldn't be able to turn very well. They just stand in one place, rock back and forth. Another one was that had to walk with a walker, leaning forward, step and step and step. And I thought, hmm, let me try something. Let's see if we can get them to walk without the water walker. Really rigid, uh, fearful, shaky. And I said, I'm going to try to... Um, add one more thing to their perception and that was touch so i held my hand like this and they had to they just lift it up and touch the bottom of my hand and all the stiffness went away it was really amazing so they could walk without their walker because they had another piece of information to 
to process and add to what they already had. So I said, let's to try some Renew 28. Anybody know what that is? Because the Renew 28, to my mind, has the ability to wake up the ability for the cells to talk to each other. So if the cells are talking to each other on a different plane than the nervous system, it's additional to the nervous system. It can support the nervous system. So I thought, well, let's give this a try. And so I had this, uh, the first time I ever did it, I kept thinking, in terms of gosh you got to be right there and, and you can figure out which which pathway the nerves are going and how they work to the brain but i i discovered since then that the global orientation that the body gets for some of these fun little tests is it doesn't really matter where you put it everybody talks to everybody it's pretty cool but I put it on the back of his neck. I put it on his low back. I put it down on the back of his knees and I put it down on his ankles. And I said, I want you to do something. First off, I said, I want you to walk down to the end of the room, turn around, come back. He was six foot, 10 and a half. He used to play basketball. He's only 50 years old, got this condition. And it was so stunningly far to the floor when you're six foot, 10 and a half. He was by far more fearful than most people. And so he walked to the walker. And uh, what I did was I said, I'd like to try and have you uh, walk without the walker. He couldn't go but a step or two because he just felt like, man, if I fall, it's a long ways from here and I'm going to break my neck. Very stiff and rigid. So I said, let's apply it back your neck, back lower back, down to back your knees, and down to the ankles. The other thing that happened to him, though, was I asked him to turn around and he just couldn't do it. It was like 25, 30 steps. He'd just stand there and try to motate, rotate. Um, so I said, let's let's add this stuff and try it again. It was a real simple test. Walk down 10, 15 feet, turn around, coming back. So he walked down the 10 or 15 feet and he set his cane to the side and had this weird look on his face. And took a couple of steps, and you could see him relax, his, his posture corrected. And he turned around in three or four steps, and he walked back to me and fell to his knees and wept. Turned out that he was going to try to uh, walk his daughter down the aisle at her wedding a week from that day. And the fact that he wouldn't have to do it with a walker at 50 years old was overwhelming to him. I found that this input, this communication between cells was really interesting. And if it could give back to the, the body system, I could teach this to anybody with a friend. They didn't have to know all the science behind it. All they had to know is it's almost like when you're fearful and someone reaches out and grabs your hand and walks with you. That is turning on a system that we all have we didn't know we had. Well, there's some other things that began to start to show up with the constant use of this in, in with people that I knew. One of them was a guy who was unable to get out of bed and he was losing his speech. He was just about 65 years old. He was ready to retire. He was pretty tall too, very rigid. His wife could not get him up in bed. He was just rigid, just stiff. She couldn't get him up to the edge of the bed and took heaven and earth to try to get him to stand up. And the interesting part was with the loss of control in his jaws and his tongue and his mouth, he, had learned Spanish so they could be Mex uh, missionaries to Mexico. And it took him years and years, finally had the time to do it. They were all scheduled to go, but he couldn't get out of bed. He couldn't walk normally, and he couldn't speak Spanish anymore. So we had him get on to the Rene 28 and the uh, ASEA, probably eight ounces a day. And within two weeks, the Spanish came back and he was able to get out of bed freely and he began to move more normally and his voice power returned. So they took off. They had a great time. He 
And then unfortunately the auto ship uh, got messed up and they weren't getting the shipments across the border. And within a month or two, he began to decline and he, they were going to come back because he had lost all of what he had gained or pretty much enough that he couldn't function anymore. Finally, the auto ship came and within a day or two, most of those things returned functionally. So I'm going to just bring up one other point and then we'll let others talk about this issue and just their own personal experience is the more that you begin to start to have effective communication between certain parts of the body. Let's say you have nerve damage somewhere, especially in the peripheral nerves or outside the central nervous system. But even in, in, in the case, more importantly, inside the central nervous system, which is your spinal cord and your brain. If you begin to do or request movement patterns, thought processes uh, over and over and over again enough, there's a thing called neuroplasticity. And over the last 20, 30 years, neuroplasticity has become more and more interesting. And your body will literally start to make new neural connections to make up for the ones that were lost. But the only way it can do it is if you request it a lot, a lot, a lot. So as therapists, we used to say, look, you're going to have to have half your day and a full-time therapist to do it enough to really get these things to accommodate. But guess what? What about the therapist in your system that kicks back in or upregulates a series of communication tools that are already on board in your system, that are turned on by redox signaling, that are constantly requesting, it could, wait a second, I got something in my eye. It could possibly begin to start to uh, ignite the need and to constantly request and to enhance the ability of the system to build the electrical components where they weren't before. But as you can see, this is a really, really, really big uh, area that we we can we can play with like crazy, like coolest. So I'm going to throw it back to you for a little bit because I could get out of out of hand, Laura. So take control and and you can tell a story or two, and then we'll see what goes. Okay, I just love, love, love what everything that you've said. So brilliant, so beautifully said. Um, okay, I'll share a couple of testimonials. I've got a friend who went to an event and there was a gentleman there who was, he was beyond having the tremors. He he was just kind of flailing about and she said, can I just try something? I, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but would you please allow me to just put a little something on your neck? And he said, yes. And um, she put a, a giant gob of goo on the carotid arteries and in less than a minute, his body completely relaxed and all the tremors went away. And his he had two adult daughters with them. One was, I think, 22 and the other was 24. And they started crying and they said, we've never seen him not be shaking their entire lives. So that's pretty neat. And then I personally have someone that I've enrolled. Um, she, uh, This woman was taking the product because she has a health challenge, but her husband, has has this neurological one as well and so as an experiment she didn't even tell him what she was doing he was just sitting down on a friday afternoon and she decided to take a big gob of the gel and just rub it on the back of his neck and then didn't even, didn't even tell him what she was doing and that weekend it was just remarkable so his short-term memory came back it was just working he stopped stuttering um the mobility became so good. They used to hear him shuffling. They, they just knew he was coming up from behind them because it was just like shuffle, shuffle, shuffle sound. He was skipping and dancing and he didn't have to have a single nap over the weekend. So they were really amazed by that. So those are my two personal testimonials. And then just wanted to add a little something. This is not um, a SIA related uh, kind of if you connect the dots, maybe a little bit. So I get to be friends with Gary Samuelson. He's the genius who figured out how to stabilize these molecules and get them into a bottle. Um, and so it could have a shelf life and you wouldn't have to have it in an IV. And um, anyway, 
I he he has founded a global cellular health coaching program that I I work with him on. And so he shares these stories with me every now and then. And he said, the people really just need to go to the chiropractor every now and then. Um, and he he shared that a lot of times when people develop this neurological issue that we've been alluding to, it's a result of having a concussion earlier in their life. Not always, but frequently. And what happens when your head sort of snaps back, it compromises the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve goes from your brain to your digestive system. This is this is huge. And so when that gets compromised, well, what can result is that things might start leaking out of your gut. And these proteins will escape out of your gut and get into your blood. They're not supposed to be there. They really love the fatty tissue of your brain. So they migrate up there and form beta amyloid, a plaque on your brain. And what Gary says is just go to the chiropractor every now and then, get an adjustment, have that neck get cracked, and then kind of you, you flush the brain with cerebral spinal fluid when you do that, just kind of washes it. And so that's just a tip that, um, but really the, the biggest uh, results I think come when you use this is my opinion. I'll just, uh, I'm going to have to step out for another another call. We just kind of cracked the door open here a little bit. But I will tell you that if you're doing some of these reflex tests and learn to do a reflex test, learn to do it properly, because I do know that 85% of the people do it wrong and it works anyway. But if you do one of the tests on somebody with these kinds of control issues, um, they might be what's called hyper reflexic, which means like panicked. It's like if you if you popped a you know a balloon behind somebody who everything just goes, and they will usually overreact to a stimulus that challenges their balance, and it's very remarkable in a very short period of time to apply the. Uh, oral form you can spray it you can put it in their mouth swish it around and or put it on their neck because that's where the skin is showing and you can see a radical change in that stability and control in a matter of seconds so the bottom line is if you can make it better and it doesn't take much to do that i suggest you probably give it a try and then say i don't know if it gets better for you, just learn to say what we say from the Bible. It says, I don't know. I was blind. Now I see. Go ask that guy. So all of you want to learn that response and we'll keep ourselves out of trouble. Thanks for having me tonight. Sorry for the kind of dirty finish here, but I got to jump on to another one. Thank you, Pops. I love you so much. And I'll talk to you later. We appreciate Bye you. For now. <laughs> Bye for now. Beth, do you want to stop recording and we'll take some questions? Thank you.